is a, a picture of the Earth taken the year before I was born. It's that old, 1972. And let's say I wanted to cut this guy out. There's a bunch of ways. Uh, quick mask mode. Has anybody played around with quick mask mode? If you hit quick mask mode, you'll notice in the channels panel, this new alpha channel appears. And if you invert it, command I, suddenly you've got everything being selected. And you can then paint out with white the things that you don't want. It's called quick mask because it's a really quick way of just quickly selecting things. You can pop into it, paint what you want to select. And it's one of those annoying things because a lot, you know, a lot of times people are working away and they realize, hey, say my tools aren't working. And if I look, I see that this little button is on or see how this is kind of highlighted in red? That's how you know you're in quick mask mode. So hit Q to pop into it, Q to pop out of it. But when you're in there, anything you paint with black will show up red and when you pop out of it, will not be selected. So that's another way to work with the selection. But for this one, I'm just going to do a quick selection running around the outside. With quick select, whatever you paint over top of gets selected. The quick select tool, if you just hit W on the keyboard, it'll take you to that top left corner. It looks like a paintbrush with a little dotted line around it. And whatever colors you click over, like if I wanted to select the Earth, deselect there. See, as I paint over the continents, it accepts those as part of the selection. So sometimes it's easier to select the background, the opposite. If you've got a fairly continuous tone background, painting around that lets it select this black. And you notice it pauses for a second. Take a look at this. As I work my way around, then when I let go, you get that little spinning wheel for a few seconds. It's doing this uh, enhance the edge. So it's looking on either side of the edge to figure out what's foreground, what's background. And on these higher contrast areas, if I give it a layer mask and then invert it because it went the wrong way around, it does a pretty good job. Where it falls down is in lower contrast areas. You can see on the back side here where it was basically shadow side of the earth, black behind. It didn't quite know where to get things. Again, with a layer mask, you can always fix things. You can always clean things up. If I can take a paintbrush, I can pop in with some white paint. As long as I know roughly where the edge of that is supposed to be, actually I should soften that up a little bit, you can rebuild that. So there's a bunch of ways this sort of selection could be made. If it was a perfect circle, let's say it was like a, a car tire or something, uh, maybe even a marquee tool. I mean, we've got the rectangular marquee, I and mean, obviously the Earth isn't a square, but if we click and hold on the rectangular marquee, we get the elliptical marquee, and if I click and drag, hmm, it might be tough to get this exactly where you want it. But watch this. If you start making a selection, let's say I thought, OK, this should get me, oh, I'm too far off to the right there. If I hold down the space bar, I can move this pre-accepted selection around, let go of space, and I can keep working on it. Now, right now, it's making ovals. It's making all kinds of horrible shapes. How do I make it only make a perfect square? Shift, excellent. And then I look for the top left corner of where I want this circle to be, and I can pull it out. Now, you might also want to make a circle that you know where the center of the circle is. If I hold down Option and Shift, look at that, it comes outward from the center. So if you know where the exact center of the circle you want is, hold down Shift and Option, click and drag, and it expands outward from the center. If you don't hold the Shift, you'll end up with ovals, but they always come out of the center, which has actually kind of a cool sort of look to it. When you let go, there's your selection. And if it's not coming out of the right spot, let's say you did Shift and Option and you aimed for the center of the Earth, but you didn't quite get it, Again, get it the right size, hold the space bar, and you can move it around. Now, this is always going to get you a hard edge selection, unless you have a feather radius set onto your marquee tool there. Uh, you can afterwards, let's say I gave this a, um, a layer mask, and I realized, oh, man, that's too hard of an edge. I'm going to undo that. This selection can be modified. Remember, select, modify, except instead of expand, we could feather it. Let's say I gave it like a, a three pixel feather radius. Then when I give it a layer mask, it's got a bit of a softer edge there. Do I have to do the um, feathering of the edge while it's a selection? I don't have to. Watch this. I'll make that selection. Start in the center, shift option. Oops, I missed. Hold down the space bar, line it up. I think we're good. That's a really hard edge selection. Make my layer mask, and that's a little bit too hard on the edge there. I can blur the layer mask. Feathering a selection is basically making a blurred edge on the selection. So if I were to take this layer mask and go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let's say I did three pixels, 3.9 pixels on that. There's before, there's after. There's that soft edge. And I don't even have to be looking at the layer mask. As long as I have it selected, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, I can play around in real time with the amount of blur. Basically, the radius of that feather after the fact.
See if you can cut out the earth, give it a new black background, and put the moon behind it. <laughs>